and they're off for the Chase Moore Farm at Fortune Stakes, this £50,000 listed race over a mile. And in Violet Silks, Radobarg is the first one to begin, leading from the red of Chindit through the opening furlong. Close up then is Purple Pay, more towards the inside. The lighter green jacket with the mauve cap, that is Breege, the sponsor's horse in this race. Then Knight in the yellow and black stripes. More towards the inside is Lord of Biscay in those green and orange colours. Further back to Sabuska, and then Silver Sword settles at the rear of the field there under Greg Shane. It is Rado Barker will lead them towards the end of the back straight and shows by a length and a half to Chintit in second. Purple Pay goes along in third. Breeze is racing in fourth. Then towards the running rail, Lord of Biscay. Between horses, Sabuska a little bit wider out is Knight and still tucked in at the back is Silver Sword. On they go inside the final, three and a half furlong shortly as they straighten. Rado Barg from Chindit, one and two. Purple Pay back in third. Breeze nicely positioned in behind with Knight on her outside. More towards the inside is Lord of Biscay. Breeze, they just seen to stumble at that point, about three furlongs out. Bit of a stumble from Breeze. Still very much in the contest though. Sabuska right behind a Silver Sword, the bat marker, as they continue up the home straight. They're soon approaching the final quarter mile. It's Rado Barg from Purple Pay. Chinded in the red moves up. So to Knight in the yellow and black. Breeze now being ridden along. Silver Sword, the grey, looking to move up towards the stand side, but it's still Rado Barg with the head in front. Purple Pay the far side. Then came Chindit, who's now said about his work. Knight's coming right into this as well. Then Breeze. They're inside the final half shortly. Chindit's hit the front. Laying down a serious challenge though is Knight. Then Radabarg and Breeze. It's Chindit though for the win in the fortune stakes. It's Chindit. Chindit from Knight. Behind those Radabarg and Breeze. And then Silver Sword. Well, Chindit was a, a remarkably resolute winner of the listed fortune stakes here under a big weight, a big penalties for his success at Haydock Pass last time. He ran in the red and white silks of Dr. Cyrus Poonawalla, who's with me now. Congratulations, Dr. Poonawalla. And this is a really important horse, an important project for you. Just tell everybody why. Yes, of course, because he'll be, uh, you know, uh, covering 100-plus uh, mares all owned by my family when he gets back. And we were a little worried about the ground as he likes firm ground, but he handled it very well. You could see him three from home that he's handling it well enough and he should hold on to win, which he did. He's a very tough and genuine horse and he's proved it today. So here's a horse by Wooten Bassett. He's got group one form. He's a, a multiple pattern race winner. He's a winner again today. He's shown it on all types of ground. How important is he gonna to be to the breeding industry as a whole in India? Very much so because he's uh, got uh, a very strong uh, up-and-coming sire line. That's very important. As a breeder of so many years, I believe that if a prospective stallion doesn't have a good sire line, a prepotent sire line, generally, even if he's a group one horse, he'd fail. But this horse has shown a lot of versatility, and uh, his win today is more encouraging because we're a little nervous about the ground. So I'll give him one more shot and hope he does well and then take him back home. And am I right in thinking that, that you've come here just for today? You've flown, flown in from India just for yeah, today? Yeah, we're leaving for the airport in 40 minutes now. And that's okay. what I call dedication. Yes, and uh, I'm so glad I made the trip this time, but uh, uh, I'll try and do it again. And this encourages me to buy another group uh, uh, place to a group uh, winning horse uh, and race him for one more year and then take him back again to stud uh, duties uh, next year. So that's a big encouragement to me. And are you going to have one or two last rolls of the dice to see if you could get him right to the top to get him to win a Group 1? Oh, I don't think he's a Group 1 horse, to be honest. Every owner would feel that uh, uh, he's got a Group 1 horse. But uh, I'm a practical breeder. I've raced for 50 years. And I, I think he's just under Group 1 form if he wins a group two for me probably on the 29th or something like that early before he goes to quarantine i looking be at delighted. the are you looking at the joel stakes at newmarket that's right that's right that it'll be a bit quick for him but we have to take that chance because the quarantine is coming close to our doors and when will he start covering mares well uh, our 15th of february like you do like in everybody this country, else yes yeah. uh, we've got 100 mares lined up for him so let's see how he travels and, uh, you know, furnishes uh, in Indian conditions. He's a very tough 
and Jay Newnholz, and uh, I hope you'll do well for me. I wish you all the best with them, Dr. Poonawala. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.